Hello and welcome to the News at 10, featuring the Sunday specials. The top stories. Federal government bans mining activities in Zampara State for security reasons. Police begin manhunt for abductors of Director of Lagos State Fire Service and six others. 25 years after the genocide, some orphans in Rwanda still searching for clues about their past. And in sports, Aqua United top group B in the Nigerian Football League. Details in a moment. Many thanks for joining us this hour. The federal government has suspended mining activities in Zampara State and other states affected by the activities of armed bandits and kidnappers. Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu says this move became necessary because a link had been established between illegal miners and bandits. Tayamodu reports. Activities of armed bandits in Zampara State and states bordering it have reached alarming proportions in the past few months and has become an embarrassment to the Nigerian government. It has prompted this emergency meeting called by the Inspector General of Police and the Director of the Directorate of Security Services, in which the Chief of Staff to the President makes a rare appearance. Only the day before, a group of concerned Zamfara citizens and other concerned Nigerians had taken to the streets of Abuja to protest, calling for the federal government to declare a state of emergency in Zamfara State. The message put out at this meeting is short and terse. Mining activities in Zamfara State and other states affected by armed banditry have been suspended. It is a strategy to ensure the success of the recently launched Operation Puff Adder, which is a full-scale security offensive against bandits aimed at reclaiming every public space under their control. The Nigeria Police Force, in collaboration with the Nigeria military and other security services, has commenced Operation Buff Ada, which is a full-scale security offensive against the bandits. The operation is aimed at reclaiming every public space under the control of the bandits, arrest and bring to book all perpetrators of the violence in the area and their collaborators. Miners are warned to stop activities or risk having their licenses revoked, and foreigners are advised to vacate their mining sites. Mining activities in Zamfara and its environment are hereby suspended with immediate effect. Consequently, any mining operator who engages in mining activities in the affected locations henceforth will have his or her license revoked. I want to assure the general public, especially in the affected areas, that the security services are doing their best to address the security situation. Activities of armed bandits and illegal miners, with both groups apparently reinforcing each other. Perhaps these drastic measures may help in finally clearing affected states of bandits and ensure peace returns to the troubled Nostrace Axis. Tai Amodu, TVC News, Abuja. Still in Zamfara, the Nigerian Air Force says it has successfully destroyed an armed bandit's logistics base at Aja and Wunaka, this in Brunin, Magaji local government area. Director of Public Relations and Information of the Nigerian Air Force, Ibikule Daramola, says more than 25 armed bandits were neutralized in the operation. This, he says, was after intelligence reports indicating the armed bandits were using a compound within Aja at, as a logistics storm. A Nigerian Air Force Alpha Jet attacked the compound, causing it to erupt into flames and resulted in the neutralization of some bandits. The few survivors who fled the vicinity of the target area were taken out in a follow-on attack uh, while others were tracked to Wonaka and equally neutralized. The police in Kaduna State says it lost two personnel to bandits in Brenin Gwari local government area. Now this came after a gun battle with the bandits who invaded Kakangi community 
in the local government on Saturday evening. Three of the bandits were said to have been gunned down. They reportedly attacked the police station at Kekangi and then destroyed houses and killed innocent people, many of whom were at a wedding ceremony. Back here in Lagos, the police command says it's on the trail of the abductors of seven persons, among whom is the director of the Lagos State Fire Service, Rasaki Musbao. They were kidnapped on Saturday night along Iwoye Bridge in Itoki Epe Road, Ikorodu. According to the police public relations officer, Bala Elkana, the commissioner of police, Lagos Command, Zubairu Mwazu, has asked its anti-kidnapping unit to ensure the rescue of the hostages. The police chief and company of the tactical unit's commanders also visited the crime scene in the early hours of today. At least three vehicles were recovered from the scene, including items said to belong to the Lagos Fire Service Director. The Lagos Command also assures residents that it has intensified patrols and surveillance along Itoki Ekpe Road, K2 and other major highways in the state. Residents of Muna Lanti community in the Borono state capital, Meduguri, are still counting their losses. A day after two female teenagers detonated twin bombs, five persons were killed and 28 more were injured. We have more in this report. Muna Lanti is a community which has witnessed several suicide bomb attacks. Yesterday's attack was no different, and it was carried out by two female suicide bombers who attacked the community just after the late evening prayers. I came around to buy a bottle of drink when I went to watch football, and as I was passing, I heard a large sound, and something pierced my leg, and I fell down. I saw a young, strange girl standing near us. She looked suspicious, and I asked her to move on, as we don't allow people to stand at our duty post. She moved away and started running, and we pursued her, and immediately she ignited her IED, and we fell down, and my friend died on the spot. And I was lucky to have a sharp nail pierced my tie, and I saw myself in the hospital this morning. Yesterday's attack was carried out by two female suicide bombers. Some of my boys saw them, and we are aware they sneaked into this area. Government should please help us and provide working tools. When some attack would have viewed the bombs, because you go on a chikimuna dalti. A victim of the suicide bomb attack which occurred last year has asked government to support them in any way possible. The young men call for government support as some of them have lost their lives in the line of duty due to poor working tools. They are caught on unawares in their quest to safeguard their communities against terror attacks. In Bayel's state, the new leadership of the Joint Task Force is calling for peace. New commander of the Operation Delta Safe, Rear Admiral Akinjide Akinriade, wants international oil companies and state governments to help avert a disruption of oil production in the Niger Delta. Oviatemi George has details. The handover of the flag signifies a change of button at the Joint Task Force, Operation Delta Safe. Rear Admiral Akinjide Akinriade takes over from Rear Admiral Apochi Suleiman, whose stay as commander lasted for almost four years. We have stabilized the region for the business of oil producing to strive for people within our joint operation to do their business without fear because of the effectiveness of all our operation, operational activities. In his efforts, he has tried to meet the mandate of ensuring that oil and gas infrastructures are protected and all forms of criminalities are checked in order to assure a safe and secure environment for economic activities to thrive within the JOA. 
Both men also spoke on the protection of oil and gas facilities and other critical national assets in the oil-rich Niger Delta region of Nigeria. The crude oil production of this country was ranging between 900,000 barrels per day. As of today, it is in the open market. You are aware, I'm aware, that there's rise in production to a level of 2 million and above. That is one of our major achievements here. But we always talk to every stakeholder, IOCs, even state governments too. They need to do more too to ensure that uh, we have a very peaceful environment for the, uh, uh, for the oil uh, companies to function. And uh, every effort humanly possible must be made to ensure that uh, oil production is not disrupted. Rear Admiral Apochi Suleiman also charged the officers and men of the Joint Task Force Operation Delta Safe to give Rear Admiral Akinjide Akinriade all of the support to succeed as commander. Ovietime George, TVC News, Igbogene, Bayelsa State. Coming up on the news at 10. Residents of Ekpe want Lagos state government to fix road leading to Ijebode. Plus, Rwandan High Commission in Nigeria honors those killed during the 1994 genocide. Stay with us for details. Thank you for staying with us on TVC News. A quarter of a century after the Rwandan genocide, some orphans are still desperately searching for any clues about their lost past. An estimated 95,000 children are believed to have been orphaned during the genocide. They know nothing about their lives before the genocide. And as the country marks the anniversary this year, some young men and women found alone and too young to remember their lives before will be scanning the crowd, wondering if the families may actually be standing among the survivors. Well, activities to commemorate the 1994 genocide began with a flame lighting ceremony. And this flame is meant to burn for 100 days to mark the period of the gory attacks. Dignitaries from all over the world gathered for a solemn commemoration in Kigali. And a minute of silence was observed for the dead. We have details in this report. <laughs> <laughs> 